Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So Joe Biden's approval rating at below 50% for the first time during his presidency and a lot of the polls in the aggregate were pre-Afghanistan and we know that these polls, because they are from the election mafia, they are vastly overestimating Democrats in their samples as I have noted on several occasions in the past, and this rings true. We got to get into this because this is detrimental for Joe Biden. It's detrimental for the Democrats in the midterms. It is detrimental for Democrats even this year with what's going on in California, what's going on in Virginia. And honestly, it's detrimental for Biden's presidency in terms of the fact that we now have to raise the question, could Biden actually end up resigning his post anytime soon we have to analyze but first it's very important that i tell you guys about my good friends over at noble gold now inflation is not a thing of the past i think we have established that already last month's inflation in the u.s had the highest rise in 29 years so with rising food and gas costs it's an urgent problem if you are thinking about retiring soon you need an inflation dam to stop your savings and assets from eroding in value. Noble Gold's expertise in retirement planning and IRAs means their team of specialists is your first stop. Inquire about this month's offer of a one-ounce American Eagle pure silver-proof coin with an IRA at noblegoldinvestments.com. Again, that is noblegoldinvestments.com. So here we go. Biden's approval rating. It's uh, below 50%, but we know that it's probably much lower than that, and people are going to say, why? You know, uh, obviously, that's just your narrative or whatever, but you have to look deep into the polls, and there was a new poll released yesterday by Reuters. Reuters was a pollster that typically had Biden up in the approval rating by 25 points. It was one of the pollsters that had him at 60%, and uh, we were laughing at that a few months ago, obviously, and now they release a poll that actually has Biden underwater. Uh, the problem with this poll, yeah, Biden's only down by one, but the sample is D plus 20, a D plus 20 sample. So the gaslighting, the insane oversampling, even that cannot save Biden anymore. Now, yes, it is true that they did weigh the sample. If you look at the weighted sample, it was roughly around D plus eight. That is still a massive oversample of Democrats, given the fact that the national environment is roughly around D plus two or so, maybe on a good year, D plus three, D plus four in terms of how many people identify as Democrats and people who identify as Republicans. And then yes, independents typically do lean Republican. Doesn't mean they can't vote Democrat, but they typically do lean Republican. So as a result, we look at Biden's approval rating. Even in the poll that oversamples Democrats by 20 points, and even then he's at 46%, he's down by one, and this is post-Afghanistan. In reality, he's probably down by 40, and a lot of people are angry. There was another poll from, I think it was Rasmussen, that showed only like 30% uh, of people approved of the way Biden handled Afghanistan. Yes, Rasmussen is typically a right-leaning pollster, but they only underestimated uh, Biden by roughly, you know, two to three points or so in the popular vote in 2020. It's not like they're just downright awful as the left likes to claim, even though they did typically during the Trump presidency and they're serving as an outlier again. But even though you look at these polls and they're showing a massive dip in support within the Rasmussen poll for Biden, kind of tells us that not only is the honeymoon period over, but Biden's approval rating is about to dip into the negatives. He's going to start being below 45%. He's probably going to go down to 40%. And if that's the case, and that is true, that the media can't even cover for Biden anymore because Biden is so incompetent, Republicans are going to have a massive year in the midterms. On an unrelated note, this happened last night. A district that voted for Biden by 20 points in Connecticut uh, flipped to Republican because the uh, Democrat that was an incumbent retired, but in the open seat, Fazio, Ryan Fazio, he won by roughly around three percentage points in a Biden plus 20 district. This is a massive flip for Republicans. Yeah, turnout obviously not the highest, but even in a Democrat area of Connecticut, Democrats had a massive drop-off. 
Republicans saw a massive surge. The energy factor remains on the Republican side, which honestly is a very good thing for Republicans moving forward, moving ahead to the 2022 elections. You look at this here. Obviously, like I said, we saw a lot of four shocks in 2017 and early 2018 for how the midterms would benefit Democrats. You're seeing the same thing here. If anything, it's on steroids, so we'll have to see what happens. But either way, now that Republicans got that seat in Connecticut, now they have met the threshold to actually have a say in redistricting, which means that there's a chance that there could be a competitive seat in Connecticut, maybe not a Republican seat, but at least one competitive seat in Connecticut, which would ultimately lead to another potential flip for the Republicans due to redistricting. That is huge news because not a lot of people expected this to happen, but it did, and the Republicans won, and they held on to flip this state Senate seat. Very impressive development happening in the state of Connecticut. But beyond that point, we look at this and we see the fact that Biden has a lot of regret, and we know this. And when you have a lot of regret, typically your voters are not going to show up to defend your party in midterms. And we saw this with Obama in 2010, uh, to a lesser extent with Obama in 2014. Um, I wouldn't say Trump had a lot of regretful voters um, for Trump. I think a lot of his base really did stick with him. And a, a good amount of the enthusiastic portion of his base did turn out in the midterms. But you have to understand that Trump is an anti-establishmentarian figure. Obviously, he may have capitulated to the demands of the RNC a little bit when he was in the White House. But still, overall, when you do analyze the big picture, his rise and his victory the first time especially came because he was not a politician and he ran against the establishment of both parties and he won. And you do need to take that into consideration when you analyze this. Biden, however, was just a response to Trump. Biden, the reason why he got above, you know, probably a few thousand votes in the entire country outside of his home state of Delaware is because he was not Donald Trump. And even in the primary, people only chose him because they thought that he would be the guy to defeat Donald Trump. But right now, what we're looking at Biden, we're seeing regret. If it gets way worse than this, because you may see more blunders, this was one blunder. Uh, the way that he pulled out of Afghanistan. It's not because he did it. I'm glad that he got the troops out of there, but it just showcased his incompetency. And all in all, it's a lose-lose. The neocons are fed up because the troops are leaving. And the right-wing populist America First crowd is fed up because it's going to create a refugee crisis. And then you have establishment Republican governors like Brian Kemp advocating to, to bring uh, hundreds of thousands of refugees to the state that's already moving so far to the left. And he's not talking about resettling these people in the country of Georgia. He's talking about resettling them in the state of Georgia. That is the problematic development that you have there. Uh, but beyond that point, we talk about Biden, his approval falling. Could he actually resign? Uh, probably not yet. He's not there yet. But if it gets worse... Yeah, Kamala Harris, uh, there was a report that showed that Kamala was, for the first time in a non-joking manner, talking about invoking the 25th Amendment, which honestly I think would happen after the midterms because then Kamala would get to serve two terms on top of the remainder of Biden's first term uh, that she would serve, even though she can't do that now, obviously, because you can only serve a maximum of 10 years uh, at, as the president. But right now what we do see is the fact that it's a lose-lose situation, and Biden can only really go down from here. His peak has already been hit, and we know this, and we talk about the regret because the regret is strong. It's almost like what you see in France with Macron, the, the approval rating plummeting. Macron was, uh, and Biden, they have a lot of similarities, but now Biden is going to also have a refugee crisis on his hand, potentially. You have foreign policy blunders, and it's just not looking good for him to the point where he potentially could actually lose a lot of his own base because of this. And there's a poll that came out here from Rasmussen, 2024 national general election poll, Donald Trump up not just, you know, in a swing state, but the popular vote by 6% over Biden. Now, okay, people are going to say, well, it's Rasmussen. Okay, how far were they off in, you know, 2016 and 2020? Off by roughly three points each time, right? Okay, still, Trump plus three 
in a popular vote against Biden, which is still arguably the strongest Democrat at this point. And I'm not saying that unironically, because you look at the rest of the field, Biden is arguably the uh, the best of the worst for the Democrats to put out there. And even then, let's say he, you know, comes three points short, obviously in an R plus three national environment, that's like 328, 333 electoral votes at that point. Um, that would be insane. I don't know if we're going to see that ever again until like actual change takes place within our country and our plus three national environment would be crazy. It would be insanely good for Republicans at a presidential level. Obviously, I think we'll see that probably happen next fall or something like that. And that's going to be huge. But what we're seeing here is that there's massive amounts of regret for Joe Biden. We see this and a lot of people when you, again, when you vote for somebody because he's not the other guy, all in all, you are going to see regret start to mount and eventually it's not going to play out very well for Biden in a general election bid if he decides to run again. And if he doesn't decide to run again, it's not going to be something that would work to Kamala Harris's benefit either that she served under Biden in the administration. And looking past that point a little bit further, I think that we truly can see that the midterm elections are going to be a disaster. If Biden's approval continues to dip, we're only in August. Yeah, things can change. But if his approval rating in the midterms is like 40%, I mean, you may see a 2018 reversed or even a wider uh, discrepancy than that. A lot of young people uh, turned out in 2018, mainly thanks to weed initiatives being on the ballot nearly everywhere. But uh, now with the fact that a lot of those have passed, you're going to see a lot of young people probably not turn out as much as they did in 2018. And that's going to be a detrimental blow to Democrats alone. And the fact that Biden probably isn't going to get a lot of these suburbanites out to defend him based off of uh, the way that his presidency has gone. And the fact that a lot of these people voted for him mainly because he was not the other guy and Trump's not going to be on the ballot. No matter how much they virtue signal about January, it's not really going to uh, make that much of a difference. It's not going to energize voters because that small segment of resist lib voters were probably going to vote anyways. So Either way, I look at this and I see a massive net benefit for the Republican Party, as well as Donald Trump's 2024 prospects if he does decide to run. Uh, and the midterms are going to be interesting, but we'll have to see what happens during the midterms first. But either way, it's looking good with the energy factor. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.